Hey, welcome back. Um, we're doing this video for the upper level. That's what they call it on the independent school entrance examination for private schools. But anybody else can watch it. It has both mathematics and sentence completion. These are like not very, very hard problems. They're like average problems that you'll see on the test. Okay, so mathematics problem number one says solve by reducing to common variables. You will probably just see the plain word here, solve, and you won't see this, but this is to help you for this video only. As you know, you can do this column, you can do the C's, this column, there are no powers, and you can do this column. So ABC is just like an alphabet. You can add straight down because this would all be positive. And you can go ahead and make this 14A if you want to. But here's where the tricky part gets, and you can't forget this. You, um, you can do from the bottom, although I would recommend that you do, you start here at 3B and then go down. But it's easy. Okay, so this is what you do. The sign is positive on this side. You only have one negative sign. Actually, I'm sorry, you have two negative signs. Let me erase that. Two negative. Two negative signs only, but the outside sign on these is positive. So when I talk, I'm talking about here. This is positive. This is positive, this is positive, so you can add straight down. Now here, I just did the first two equations. And I went ahead and got 6a, and if you go straight across, you have 3b, and remember this is 1b, because 1 times b is b. So always remember that, that's 2b, and then this here. Remember, this is positive 5 minus 3, so that's 3c. So now you have a new equation here. And if you go over to the next side, you're going to add that equation. This is your new equation to the original equation because these first two equations you already did. So then you have 6a plus 2b plus 3c equals 8a plus b plus 3c, and then you have 14a plus 3b plus 6c. And this is your answer. So if you just keep everything together, you are fine. Don't worry about like if there are exponents unless you see them. And then here you are, you're done. Now, this is problem number two. Oh, that's horrible. Anyway, um, here's what we're going to do. You have to remember that you've got to group everything together. You have a b squared, a b squared, a b squared. So you have all your variables here. Now here's where it gets tricky. You have a squared over here by itself. So that should tell you already that this here is a separate term. And you cannot combine it with these two terms. These two terms are on their own, and you wouldn't combine it here because there's B and here. And here the author made this easy for you because 3A plus 8AB is over here to itself, and then 2AB plus 3AB is over here. So just remember to keep this separate. Now, we're going to go on ahead and move on to step two. Okay, we're on practice problem number two. So this, you have three equations. You can condense if you want to, but I want you to look at something. You can add the first two equations, but here you have a term by itself because a squared doesn't show up here, doesn't show up here. And guess what? a, b doesn't show up here. Okay, so you have a, you have a separate term. Okay, so now when we get ready to go over here, we're going to do the first two equations, 
and we're going to leave this one alone for now. So now we're going to have a squared plus v squared, I'm sorry, plus negative b squared, or you could just say minus v squared. And as you know, this is, if you think about it, is 1b squared, but it's minus here, positive here, so it cancels out, that's 0. Your a squared gets brought down. Your 3ab plus 8ab is 11ab. Now, if you don't want to add a cross, okay, that's okay. You don't want to add a cross here. Remember that as you pull this down, it's going to come out the same anyway. But whatever steps are easier for you. So if you went a squared plus 3ab plus 8ab, you are going to get a squared plus 11 a, B anyway, because when you add this, 3 plus 8 is 11, and this is A, B is the term. So you get A squared plus 11, A, B. Okay, now your next term, we've already taken care of these, this part of the equation, so now we add 2ab plus 3b squared plus 3ab, and when we add, we're going down as we can. 3b comes straight down because other than this positive 3b squared, this is all we see here. Now, a squared has to go somewhere on its own and to itself. And this is 3, and this, this is 5ab plus 11ab. And then when you add 11 plus 5, you get 16. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and add ab here. And this is why. You have 16ab. Now you can write this usually when you write an equation out. Probably in the answer, it'll say it'll say like a a squared plus uh, 3b squared plus 16ab because it keeps it it probably in the original. But as long as you have the answers and you remember what's positive and what's negative, it really doesn't matter how you're going to add it. So that's the math uh, situation. By the way, we're the Jacobitz Learning Group. This is your answer, by the way, so check that off. And if you have any questions, jacobitzlearning at gmail.com. Okay, for sentence completion, we can start here. The Blitzkrieg was a series of campaigns targeted in specific countries. Although the Blitzkrieg worked in Denmark, France, Norway, and in Greece, the British surprised the Nazis by blocking their naval supplies so that Germany would not have either A, enemy supplies, B, ally supplies, C, coding machines so that the Germans would not identify them, or D, U-2 bombers. Now let's go over something, even though, you, even if you don't know what the Blitzkrieg was, by the way, it was Adolf Hitler's plan to um, win w, uh, World War II. Um, but even if you don't know, it, 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 it did say that it was a series of campaigns. You don't have to know exactly where the campaigns begin, but you know it's in Europe because all these companies, countries, excuse me, countries are going on. And, you know, Greece is kind of in the middle Mediterranean, but kind of they were trying to block off the Nazis were, and even the British and America at one time wanted to go against the Nazis. So we have a big clue here, though. It says naval supplies. And it says blocking. So once you see Navy, okay, and that's kind of how we got this color. Maybe I should write it in Navy. But that's kind of how we got this color, Navy, because it meant 
the the Marines, the boats, you know, people going out to protect us. That's who the Navy was. Okay, so they were the naval supplies, so the Germany would not have enemy supplies. Well, of course not. You know, so, but uh, do we want the Nazis to have enemy supplies? Because enemies would be us. So, you know, of course this isn't the answer. I put the wrong end on check mark here. Okay, and so that's not the answer. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, um, ally supplies is a possibility. Coding machines so the Germans would not identify them. That's possible. You have DU-2 bombers. U-2 bombers went in the air. So it is a possibility, but guess what? Because you are linked over here to naval supplies, that means they're in the water. <laughs> okay? Navy is water. You're blocking off ships. So you're trying to use clues, as many context clues as you can, as many symbols, as much vocabulary as you can from the past to figure this out. So that takes this out. Okay, so now it's a possibility. Now you're down to B or C. Now, was it just coding machines so that the Germans would not identify them? Okay, uh... You think they just needed coding machines when they're out in the water? Or do they need supplies? Because sometimes you bring supplies through the water. And allies are your friends. And we won't get into who Germany's friends were. We don't need to know that. We just need to know that if they had allies or they had people that were forced to be their allies. That's what happened. So your answer here is B. So when you're reading these, look for clues. Um, look for what's already been given to you, specific companies, and look at blocking naval. Those are your two big main words here. And once you get into blocking naval supplies, it's on the water. So you're looking for something, and it has to do with supplies. Let's go to sentence completion problem number two. Frida Kahlo, or Frida Kahlo as she was called, was labeled a surrealist. Although most of her artwork was made of self-portraits, she added elements of her own life and its sadness. For example, her famous opus, The Flying Canvas, included. If you don't know what this word means before you get ready to attack it, it means something from your words. Do you remember like your root words? Sir means above. So it's above something that's real. And there were, surve there were surreal artists like um, Salvador Dali, Frida Kahlo. They were people who painted things that were above what most people would expect to see. And for those of you who know Frida Kahlo, you know she did things like that too. So now we're talking about this work here, the flying canvas. And canvas is what you paint your artwork on. Canvas also makes up the tint. So let's see which one would help pull this. Like we just need a for example. So there's not a contrary situation here. There's just a straight example that we're looking for of something that would be on her canvas. So She was wearing a white dress signifying innocence, maybe. Traveling through the air representing her injuries, maybe. Uh, included Frida Kahlo with Diego Rivera flying around her, uh, maybe. And a simple self-portrait of Frida Kahlo with her hair in a bun. Uh, those were called self-portraits, so go ahead and take D out. Now let's take these together. Frida Kahlo wearing a white dress signifying innocence would just be a simple self-portrait. So this is something that we want to tie back to uh, these words here, her own life and its sadness. So we want to get into what would make Frida Kahlo sad. Okay, uh, although she and Diego argued a lot and this and that, we want to talk about its sadness and 
the flying canvas was really about her 